Okay, folks, it's uh, it's ten o'clock, so I want to get started here with the uh, with the discussion here on uh, Onbot Java blocks uh, programming resources and, a, and an overview of the Control Hub. And uh, and so, uh, welcome everybody. Glad to see you joining us. We got uh, twenty nine folks out there, and uh, and if you weren't on a minute ago when I was doing some humorous uh, background, we got the water water game going out there. Um, let's talk a little bit today about uh, about where you find programming resources, uh, just as an intro before we get into how to do the blocks and that sort of thing. So, uh, if you go to firstinspires.org. Um, and then click on um, First Tech Challenge Game and Season. This is what comes up, and you want to look right here for Programming Resources, where the red arrow is. Uh, and then, when you click on that, what you get is this particular page right here. So, in each of these bubbles, uh, you've got the Blocks Programming Tool, you've got the Onbot Java Programming Tool and you've got the Android Studio uh, instructions. So all of that information is readily available to you uh, right there. Um, and, uh, and inside of each one of these uh, components will take you to the right spot for you to be able to, to get to where you need to go. Um, so how do you get the software development kit? Well, there's two ways to do it. Um, one way to do it is to go out to the Google Play Store uh, and download it. Uh, and so that's just like downloading an app on in, on your phone. Uh, for anybody that's an Android person, uh, you just go to the Play Store and you look up FTC, uh, you'll see the robot controller and the driver station. Uh, you wanna get the robot controller on your robot controller phone and the driver station on your driver station phone. Um, or you wanna get, them, uh, and you wanna get the robot controller onto the control hub if you happen to be a control hub user. Um, so the other way to get it is to go to GitHub. Uh, and, and so again, go back to this page back here. Down the page is the link to the GitHub forum. I don't have it actually shown on this particular screen, but you can get to the GitHub forum right there. You go over on this page and you click on code. And when you open it, you'll have the opportunity to download it. And once you've gotten it downloaded, you want to look in the doc file that's over here on the left hand side um, and you can click on the doc file and inside of the doc file is um, where you will find the applications. Uh, you'll also be able to get additional help information by scrolling. If you take this screen right here and just scroll down the screen, you'll see this part right here. And this is where you can get to all your Java documentation. Uh, and if I were to click on this right now, what would happen is it would actually open up the, uh, it would actually open up the documentation in my web browser, which I don't really want to do because that will, uh, that will make it kind of difficult from a screen share standpoint. Um, but one of the, this has all the Java code, um, located inside this particular uh, documentation folder. So if you're looking for a specific command on how to, you know, that in Java to have your robot do something, uh, this is your source to be able to do that. Okay. There's also another uh, piece here uh, in, that's out there available that's called the FTC app wiki. Uh, and again, you can click on that and it will bring you to this part of the, uh, of the, screen where you can get to, as you can see over on the right hand side over here, all of the various tutorials that are available in the, uh, about the, the FTC uh, software development kit, including a section down here on troubleshooting. And what I will tell you is in, both in advanced topics and troubleshooting, that is where the, the folks from FIRST will post information uh, for you so that you have the, uh, the latest and greatest with regard to any issues that may be emerging. Um, okay, so now that we've gotten to that part, uh, gotten, gotten through all that. What?
Yeah, you're in the right chat. Just had someone who accidentally unmute, unmuted, but I think they've they've figured that out and muted themselves back. Okay, so so um, what we want to do at this point is we want to talk a little bit about how we're going to uh, to uh, use both blocks and uh, Onbot Java. So what I have here is uh, I have my phones. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for just a minute here. Um, and I have my phones, and so hopefully you can see the phone right here. So I'm going to turn the phone on. I'm looking at a different computer to make sure that uh, what I'm showing you is showing up. Okay, I got to get it so the glare is not bad on it. Yeah, so you probably heard we still got sound this year in our, uh, in our things. So I've got my two phones here and they're connected. Um, and, uh, and, and so at this point, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to screen share again and I'm gonna show you how we're going to go about doing that. Give me just a sec. And so we're gonna share the screen here. All right, so I'm gonna click in the upper right hand corner and I'm gonna still show this to you uh, in the other screen as well. So on my, uh, on my robot controller phone, but you can do it on either one, either the driver station or robot controller. I'm gonna click on uh, the three dots, and then I'm gonna click on program and manage. And when I do that, you get the second screen here on the computer. And I'm just looking to see if you can see that. And you'll notice that it has a, uh, a connection here. And so now what I've got to do is I'm going to have to go out of full screen for just a second to be able to get to this uh, because what I'll do is I'll try to share my screen as I do this. Um, let me end, stop the share and get back here. So let me see if I can share my desktop now. No, it's not, it doesn't want to do that. All right, let me get back to this. I'll, I'll, I'll get it connected. What I got to do at this point is I've got to go down here and I've got to connect my uh, wireless connection on my phone to the, the uh, address that's there called direct-zp-fta1-rc. So I have a illegal uh, robot controller name because I don't assign a number. I just put FTA1 in there. So I'm going to connect to that. And it's gonna probably ask me for my password, but maybe not because I've connected before. Uh, and it sometimes takes a few seconds. So what I'll tell you is you just need to be patient while it's doing it. Um, and then once it does that, and it shows me that I'm connected with no internet and I'm still waiting. And some of that may be because I'm also on a wired network at this point. Um, and so just gotta, Got to be able to, okay, so I've now got it, it says no, uh, no internet uh, and secured. And so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to open my web browser and I'm going to uh, go back in here to the Zoom meeting and share with you the web browser screen. So here we go. All right, so now at the top up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the address that's in, uh, that shows on my robot controller. So that's 192.168.10.49.1.8080. And what you see is it's come up on my screen here um, and you can now see the, uh, that I'm connected to my robot controller uh, through, the, uh, through the wireless. Now, let me go back real quick and change my screen share here to uh, share a different screen. We'll go back to this real quick for just a second. So you can see, again, I use the right-hand part of the screen here uh, to connect to my, uh, to connect to my uh, internet. Uh, and there's the, uh, the address down at the bottom there. Uh, click through all my little arrows. Um, and, and so now, now that we've got it connected, uh, 
one of the steps that you would want to go through if you're doing this uh, for real is you're going to do you're going to hook up to your rev expansion hub uh, you're going to turn on that power uh, and then you're going to you're going to configure just click on chat right there um, then configure the three uh, the three buttons um, using your three dots you're going to configure the hit configure robot and then hit new and then hit scan so that it will pick up your rev expansion hub uh, and then we're going to go on to what do we do now that we go into onbot java so let me switch back to uh, that screen uh, so give me just a second all right should be there right now all right Let's see if it's updating Well, it didn't change on my test screen, so let me just do it the different way here and share this screen this way. There it goes. Okay. All right. So, um, so we've got this back up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our onbot Java. And you'll notice that I have several programs out here on this, uh, this side of the screen. But let's just for the sake of argument say that we want to create a new program at this point. So what we can do is we can add a file. We have to give it a file name. So I'm going to call it test three. You can't test three and you can't put any spaces in there. You can't put underscore in. And then if we, what I always suggest that you do rather than start with a blank template is use the built in um, examples that are in here. So if you wanted to do a, a push bot, type of robot. Let's just say we wanted to do a pushbot that uses tank drive and uses an iterative type program. And an iterative program is one where it starts the loop, goes to the bottom of the loop, then comes back to the top of the loop and runs the loop again. Okay. So we're going to click on pushbot tank iterative and we're going to tell it we want to preserve our sample. Okay. Um, that's very important that we want to preserve the sample because if you overwrite your sample then you may run into a challenge uh, if you have to start all over again so when i click on ok you'll notice that what it does is it brings up the entire program here and this is a sample program that you can use to create your own program and you can decide that you want to use the names that are in here, or you can decide that you don't want to use the names. Let me see if I can slide this over just a little bit. Um, you're gonna have to bring it back up though. Um, the, uh, you can see in here that this particular uh, robot has um, a claw because they're talking about claws. And it also has, so if we go down in here, what we see is that it has um, game, uh, uses the game pad for your left and right. Um, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up to, um, this is the, the hardware file. I didn't start with that one. I wanted to just kind of show you how you would do this. Um, but one of the things that uh, that first uses in all of their sample programs is they declare all their variables in the hardware file. Uh, and so if you go into the hardware file, what you find here is that all of the motors are all declared here in the hardware file. Um, and you can create those um, those variables just like you would if you were using uh, um, Android Studio, uh, you can create your, your program uh, by, again, declaring all your variables. So you've got, let's start here at the top. First place, we've got to import all of the, of the um, various um, uh, uh, parts of the program so that they run properly. So we're importing all these hardware types, uh, the motors, the sensors, um, the, uh, all of those types of, uh, of, of uh, files that we want to make sure are part of our uh, overall program for this particular program. And then it basically goes in here and tells you, hey, we've got a left drive, a right drive, a, a, 
they call it left arm, uh, you could call it lift arm, whatever you want to call it. And you don't, you're not stuck with these particular uh, variables. You can use any variable you want. This is, again, just a sample. Uh, but one of the things for folks that are just starting out uh, or even starting new for the year, it's sometimes good to start with a good, clean uh, product. Um, we want to then go in and declare all of our, uh, all of our uh, various uh, motors and servos as public uh, variable, uh, op mode members. Um, and then we want to uh, create the, the same thing for our servos. Uh, and so in this particular case, I, I commented out. So again, if you're not familiar with Java, this is your first time, you can comment something out just by putting two slashes in front of it. I, I only had one servo on the particular robot that I wrote this program for. Uh, and so I, I set it to what we call mid servo, uh, which again is just in the middle uh, of the servo variable. Uh, a servo variable runs from zero to one. Uh, and so uh, if you want it to be in the middle, you just set it at 0.5. Uh, this is where, this is very important because your, your hardware map is what then carries forward. Um, and what we've done is we've created this hardware map uh, name. We then have the names of all of the things that we're using, um, uh, the various variables again, so left drive and left underscore drive, this part that's in quotes is what goes into your configuration folder on your, uh, on your actual uh, phone, your driver station or robot controller when you're doing your configuration. Uh, right drive would be the other one. Um, one of the things you always have to do is determine which way you want your robot to go. Uh, and so if you're doing motors that are faced like this, clockwise is one direction and it's the other direction in the other robot. So you've got to tell it that I want one of them to be reversed from the other. Um, and then um, if you're using any other sensors, you want to make sure you've got those uh, set up as well. Okay, so then we go back over to our little test three here that we've got. Um, and we can see here where, again, we're just simply uh, telling the robot that we want the variable left to take the value that is returned by the joystick the left joystick, and we want to take the value right, and we want to take the value that is returned by the joystick. Now, again, a lot of people, um, we put a minus sign in front of this uh, gamepad. Uh, so I've got a gamepad here. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Um, uh, get, um, um, the, my assistant is moving the chat so we can see what you can see. Okay, right, so here's your gamepad. And so when you push the gamepad forward, that returns a negative number. And the reason for that is because if you think of the gamepad going all the way through, and I'm pushing it forward on the Y axis, the bottom of the Y axis is actually going negative, right? So if you want your robot to go forward, you've got to take a minus of that number. When you push it forward, it's gonna return a negative number and a minus of a minus equals a plus. And so that's gonna make your robot go forward. And, uh, you know, I did this for about four years before I finally figured that out, that, that it's reading the bottom of this control, not the top of the control. So you're pushing forward, it's returning a negative number. Same thing on the Y axis, I mean, on the X axis, if you push it to the right, which would be positive on a normal X, Y quadrant, um, you're, you're actually returning a negative uh, X uh, number. Okay. So, um, Looking down here again, so then we want to set the drive to whatever that number is, uh, and that's setting the power. Again, one of those uh, commands that's available out there by looking into your, uh, at all the various commands in the Java doc. Um, and then down here, uh, at the next lines down, we're using this to set our, uh, our uh, claw. Uh, mechanism. So we had, if we had two servos, what this is doing is it's going to, to make the claw do this to grab something. Uh, and, and all it's doing is saying, if you push the right bumper, it's going to add to the claw speed. If you push the left bumper, it's going to subtract from the claw, using the claw speed as the, the speed at which it moves. Uh, and then it's going to take down here in this code, it's going to take whatever that mid servo was, which is five, and it's either going to add that offset or it's going to subtract that, that offset. 
one or the other, which makes your claw go back and forth like this, okay? And then uh, down here at the bottom, again, you can have the, the, uh, the arm up, arm down. Now, once you've done all of this and you've finished, uh, I didn't uh, do anything with this particular uh, file. So I'm, what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to close this one out because what I don't want to do is, uh, well, I, I guess I could induce an error. Over here in the far right hand side, once you've finished with your, with your program and you're ready to go, you simply tell it to build. And it tells me that the build failed. And the reason the build failed is because I put something in here that has caused it to fail. Uh, and so what I gotta do is I've gotta go um, get rid of this one. And let's see if we can get it to build again. Okay, so it's telling me right here that in file name Java test two, line 71, column 12, there is a, an error. So I'm gonna go in here and look at line 72. Oh, I'm sorry, line 71. Line 71 okay. and, it, and it's telling me that there, that there is an error here. So, in order to get rid of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that file. And it's gone away. And now I can tell it to build. And now it's telling me that it can't find things in um, test three. And so what we would have to do is we would have to correct all of the errors that, in, that are in here in order to get this. So it's looking for something in the class of hardware pushbot. And notice that over here on the left side, I don't have a hardware pushbot showing. And so that's where the error is coming is because it does not find the hardware pushbot. So if I wanna correct that, I have to do Hardware push bot. I have to go here and tell it I want to use the hardware push bot and bring that into my list of files. And then if I tell it to build again, hopefully this time it'll build. Yes, so build successful. So all my references are in place back and forth between these test programs that I've, uh, that I've built. And, 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 uh, and, and so what, I, what happened was in my test three, let's go back to test three. I'll show you why this was not working right. So in test three, the reason it wasn't working right is because right here, it was looking for hardware pushbot. And I did not have hardware pushbot in my team code folder. And I had not changed this to say something different. So in test two, test one, if I go into test one and do the same thing, what you'll see here is that, I'm sorry, let me go to test. What you'll see here is that I've used also hardware pushbot in this particular one. And so now it's using the hardware pushbot as a means to, uh, to show, to connect back to all these variables. See, if I gave a variable name, for example, of claw offset or claw speed, if I told it that I wanted to use the, uh, um, if I told it that I wanted to, to use the, uh, the uh, left and right drive. If I don't have hardware pushbot, if I if I don't have hardware pushbot and I don't have left and right declared, it's not going to work. Okay. So, do you have any questions up to this point on uh, on this this part of it?
And, and while we're talking about that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over and show you blocks that I think the important thing for you to realize is that when I press this build button down here, all of that information went wirelessly to my phone. So you can change your program right here on the fly as you're doing iterations in your autonomous or your teleop. You hit the build. As soon as you see it down at the bottom down here, say build successful, all of that information is now back on your robot. You can exit the programming mode right here. And when you exit the programming mode, you just tell it to exit and you're back to your normal screen, you can test the program again. You heard it go back on, come back on. So it restarted the robot. Um, and uh, so again, that's, that's the easy way to do that and update your programs. One of the things that uh, other teams, uh, before I move on to blocks, one of the other uh, tips that I'll offer you is that if you really like to do uh, your basic programming out in Android Studio, you can do all that and copy it all uh, from your Android Studio file and upload it into your, uh, onto your robot uh, using one of the settings folders over here. Uh, I'm sorry, this one right here, the upload files. So if you clicked on, you had it on, a, on, your, on your laptop, uh, you pull it out of the, out of, you find the folder that it's on in, in uh, Android Studio, you go here to upload files and it will, put them into this list of files that are now residing on your robot controller so that you can adjust them here. Okay, so let's go on to blocks real quick. So what I did was I've got a basic tank drive from blocks that I built a year ago. Um, and I'm just gonna show you real quick what that looks like. Um, so again, this is a, a basic blocks program um, that will allow you to, um, to to do something similar, um, you know, go it, it does, again uses left drive, right drive, uh, right hand, left drive, left hand. And I had in this particular case, I had a little servo that was on the back of a, a robot that would do some things. Um, and and again, you're using similar code. Now, what what I would point out to you is look out over on the right hand side over here, uh, where my cursor is, if you can see it over there. And what you'll see is that. Uh, that over on this right hand side is, uh, is all of the blocks programming turned into Java code. Um, and so the blocks programming engine will actually create for you uh, the actual Java code. So if you're again uh, interested in learning programming, but you, you feel more comfortable with a, a sort of a drag and drop, you can use that over here um, to, to create um, your program and, and see what the outcome is going to be over on the right hand side. Uh, so notice over here, we on the left side, we've got the left drive, but over on the right hand side, it's translated into private DC motor left drive, okay? And right drive, private DC motor right drive. And then your servos are right here. Um, the servos that are named down here in the bottom are all are are all in there so 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 when it's all done and done um, you can see over on the right hand side something that looks real similar to the program that we were just messing with uh, over on the onbot java uh, side of the equation and Again, blocks uh, is really pretty easy. Uh, you, you can go in here and just kind of play around with it if you want to create a teleop program, if you want to create an autonomous program. You, you want to put it into a group that's called blocks. And the reason for that is that when you go in here to open your, open your menu on your controller, it puts those into various categories. So you can see that it's a block program or a autonomous program or a teleop program uh, various in the various categories. And that's from your from your menu where you have your you select your program right there. Okay. Um, 
again, do I have any questions uh, at this juncture on, on blocks? I think the easiest thing to do with blocks is uh, to just play around with it. You know, it really and truly is pretty easy. You've got all of your actuators right here, all your sensors, the various sensor types are all right there. Um, all your utilities uh, are right here. Um, and, uh, and you can, again, your game pad, how you, you know, so you can grab the game pad icon, drag it over onto the screen. Um, and, uh, you know, all those various things are all right there for you to be able to use. Um, uh, your math equations, again, um, to, to create things. How do you do a loop? Uh, again, all right in there. Your logic uh, commands, uh, if commands, um, are all right in there. Uh, and then you can create your own variables. Um, and right here is where you would create a variable um, and, uh, and just attach it to one of these and drag it out there and, uh, and, and create your program. Um, any, uh, again, pause real quick, see if there's any questions. And I've got about, uh, about 15 minutes here. Um, so what I would like to do is, uh, at this point, just do a quick transition to, um, to the, uh, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my robot controller phone off. Um, all right, let me get to hear it boot up one more time. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to turn, I'm going to exit out of the program on my robot controller phone. So I'm no longer on that. And thanks to our friends at the Teen Tech Titans, I've got a, I've got a Rev Control Hub here that I'll show you. Um, and so you get the, this Control Hub, uh, and what this does is it replaces your expansion module, your Rev Expansion Hub, and it uh, replaces the phone. So you've got two devices built into one here. Uh, I'll, I'll show you on the end of it. If you can see, there's several ports on here. Uh, so it does allow you, uh, if you really want to, you can hook an HDMI cable up to it. Uh, and put it into a monitor and kind of see what's going on uh, with the phone, uh, very much like you could see on the screen um, with uh, your robot controller, but you don't really need that to be honest with you. You also have two USB ports here uh, as well, uh, a USB-C and uh, the uh, micro uh, USB port uh, below it. Um, there's also a, uh, a, a USB to connect your, uh, to connect a, uh, uh, a yeah, USB 2 and USB 3 ports here that you can use to connect uh, a jump drive uh, if you need to be able to do that. Um, what I will tell you is that there's a, a tremendous amount of information that's available since I'm on this screen right now. I'll just go to it real quick and um, I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta get to a new tab. I'll tell you what, we'll go back over. Uh, it keeps wanting to, I'll just go right here. Okay, we've got it. Question. My phone does not read the new hub. Do you know why? The, is you talking about the new control hub? Is that your question? It's not reading the new control hub? Okay, stand by. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But first, I want to, what I want to do is I want to take you to the Rev website. So we're going to go to RevRobotics.com. Ah, we're going to go to RevRobotics.com. And over here under Tech Resources, you're going to want to go to First Tech Challenge. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the Control Hub Guide. And in here are step-by-step -step instructions. And what I recommend you do, because that's what I did just the other day with this hub when I borrowed it from, from uh, the Teen Tech Titans is, I just went in here at the very beginning. I had used this hub last summer when I was getting ready to do some first global stuff. Uh, they were kind enough to lend it to me then. And, and uh, so I just had to go back in and kind of refamiliarize myself. Uh, and so you just go page after page after page and follow all the steps here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the phone now how I want to connect with this. And I hope that that will answer Domingo's uh, question. 
So you're gonna go to set three dots and then settings. And then you're gonna go to pairing method and click on it. And under pairing method, it's now gonna give you the option to do control hub or Wi-Fi direct. And so what we wanna do is we wanna do control hub. And then we wanna do pair with robot controller and it's gonna show you none and you're gonna click on Wi-Fi settings. And it's gonna bring up, oh, it's not gonna bring anything up and you know why? Because I don't have it turned on. So give me just a sec. And let me plug it in. All right, so here's what it does when it boots up. I'm, I got it turned upside down, I apologize. It's gonna, it's gonna flash at you for a minute or two. And I think it's already ready, nope, not yet, still blue. It's hard for me to see what color that is when I'm looking at it from behind. There we go. All right, so now it's turned green and it should, green and then flash one, one time blue. And, and what you see here is that it's already connected because I had connected this phone in the past, but on here, you'll see that it is connected now. And all I did was I selected the, in this particular case, it's called 15703RC, because that's their team number, 15703RC. So as soon as it, if, if I hadn't connected to it, I would click on that to connect. And then at that point, I would enter the password. Now the default password is password. Hint, once you have done this, you want to change your password to something other than password because otherwise someone else will be able to log into your control hub and take control of it. Probably not a good thing. So, so you wanna make sure that you change your password, but I'm not gonna tell it to forget. I wanna go back and I wanna go, I'm gonna hit the back button now that I'm connected. You'll see, you'll see that it says Wi-Fi and it's got the, the, I think you can read the team name there in red just above the Wi-Fi. And so now I wanna hit back again. I wanna hit back again. And you heard it, it just connected. And you should be able to see on here that it's connected to their robot controller or to 15703. And so it's actually now connected to the control hub. All right, so Domingo, did that help you or not? Uh, while Domingo's sorting out his answer, I already did that step. Okay, so um, you can, uh, the, the, what I would suggest you do then is follow the instructions to re, yeah, follow the instructions to re, restart the hub. Um, which is basically disconnecting the power and holding down the little button that is underneath the light um, on the control hub. Plug the button back in and keep holding it down. It takes it sometimes 30 seconds until you see it flashing pink and it will have reset the control hub to default settings. And then I would start over from that step and see whether that can help you. Okay, so so what we've done then is we now have the capability, if I go back in here, um, I gotta get a, it doesn't matter. I would still, I would still reset it. Yeah, it, I got your, your chat saying it's a brand new hub. I would still reset it. If you just reset it to default settings one more time, that may solve your issue. If it doesn't, what you can do is send me an email and we'll, uh, I'll get on a Zoom meeting with you and help you get it, uh, go through it if that's okay. I'm happy to do that uh, pretty much any time, any day. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is I want to uh, now connect to it and I've got to get, 
I'm, I'm fighting my, okay, so, so now in order to connect to this, I want to connect now to one, nine, two, This is a different IP address than the, the uh, robot controller. So what I got to do is I got to go through this until I find my, um, connect to robot controller guide. This is the page that I was just talking about. Um, I apologize. I thought I had this bookmarked, but uh, I need to get back to the page where it gives me the the uh, IP address to connect. There it is right there, 192. All right, so 192.168.43. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paste that into my web browser. Oh, and guess what? I got to go over here and I've got to connect to 15703. I forgot to do that. And remember I said the password is password. And just like before, it takes a few seconds to be able to, uh, it takes a few seconds for it to connect. And so you should be, you should see that on your screen right now that it's, uh, it's trying to connect to 15703. Okay, so it says connected, no internet and so now I'm there, um, and uh, so Domingo, did you get to that phase uh, where you where you did what I just did to get it up on the computer? Okay, you might try that and see if you can get it up on the computer, and then you may be able to determine because what you can do then is click on this Manage tab right here. And you can go in and see what it's named, see what the password is, uh, see which band it's operating in. And then if you have, one of the things you're gonna wanna do with the new control hub is make sure that you've got the firmware updated. You have to upload the robot controller app. Uh, it probably will not be on there. And you also have to update the control operating system. And all of that information is available over on the Rev website uh, where you can get all of that, uh, all of that information uh, available to you. Um, so, so what are the pros and cons of a, uh, of a robot controller? I got about four minutes here and I just want to you know, kind of give you the, my thoughts uh, as an FTA on the, what are the pros and cons of a, of a Rev control hub versus a, uh, a, a phone. Um, so, so one of the obvious pros with the phone is you have two built-in cameras. You got the camera that's on the back and you got the camera that's on the front. You also got a screen where you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, the disadvantage of, uh, of this is you got to mount the camera so that the phone and the camera are kind of working together to be able to see the field uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and you got to put it in a position where it doesn't necessarily damage the phone. Um, at the same time, though, uh, you don't have the capability to uh, have a built-in camera with the expansion hub. You have to get yourself a, a, a small camera uh, and add that, uh, plug it into the, uh, in, into the control hub. Um, and, uh, and then if you want to use the control hub's um, internal direction sensor, the IMU, you also have to 
to put your control hub in so that it's sitting level like this uh, in order to be able to use the IMU. If you don't want to use the, the internal gyroscope software and you're not planning on doing that, you can mount it any way you want, but it won't work like this. It will work like this. Um, and then, um, so, but the, the, the key thing, and this is probably the, the piece that I think, uh, you know, as working at Worlds for a couple of years uh, and working with the leagues here all the way up through Worlds, uh, my personal experience, the, the biggest single challenge that we have with robot controllers uh, is the, the wire that connects into the bottom of this and connects into the top of your expansion hub. Uh, somewhere along the line, that disconnects, and when it does, then you basically uh, may or may not be able to recover and your robot's either sitting there uh, throughout the entire match not doing anything or whatever. Um, yeah, Javier Duran uh, points out that the IP address is different than the expansion hub and that's exactly what I was uh, typing in. I had to go find that, that IP address a minute ago. So, so I think that's an important, uh, th that's a really important consideration of why you might want to consider going to the control hub uh, in, in the short term. Um, okay, so I got about uh, two minutes left. Let me answer any other questions that, uh, that anyone might uh, have. Again, I tried to just kind of give you a quick overview um, and, and walk you through the steps. Uh, if, uh, if I'll put uh, my email address in the chat here. Go ahead, uh, Peggy, put it in there. And um, if you do have any real challenges uh, with hooking it up or doing anything with it, if you want to just send me a, a, an email, I'm happy, to, uh, I'm happy to try to help you uh, on a private chat or, uh, or a private Zoom meeting. Yes, the answer, uh, Andrew, thank you for that question is yes, everything is done wirelessly just like you would with Onbot Java or with Blocks. Uh, and so you would do that right here just by going to Onbot Java. Uh, you'll notice that I've actually got, the, got it programmed right here um, and it's, it's actually got a program that will work uh, and I can build it right here and it should build okay because I haven't done anything with it and it's finished. And so now if I hook up my Real quickly, since we have just a couple of minutes left, um, if I hook up my uh, joystick to the robot controller and press start A, and Peggy hold the motor up in front of the camera, and then I select my uh, teleop, which is right here. Oops. Yeah, I thought I could get it going, but it doesn't, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want, want to uh, recognize right now. But anyway, um, so I think one of the other things that's really cool, last comment, uh, new update to the SDK, if I unplug this and plug it back in, it finds it again. So if you have a break in your connection, um, it finds your, your controllers again. Thank you for that question, Andrew. Uh, any other quick questions? Yeah, hit enter. Here's my email address. Uh, again, if, you, if you're having, Javier, if you're, I mean, not Javier, but uh, Domingo. Yes, yeah, so you save it by downloading the file and you can go right here and click on it and click download and it'll download to your download folders on your Windows computer. Um, and uh, that allows you to transfer it off the robot. Great question. Right. Any other, any other quick questions? Okay, folks. Well, I want to urge you now to go to firstinspires.org, click on FTC, uh, and game and season, and there should be a link right there in the middle of the page that'll let you take take you to the Twitch TV broadcast. And um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll do that right here, just so you know where I'm going. Firstinspires.org. We're going to go to programs. 
First Tech Challenge game and season. And right here is watch on Twitch TV. And so that's where we're headed. And uh, good luck to everybody and uh, have a great season and we'll hope to see you this afternoon.